नमस्कार वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यूवर्स एंड लर्नर्स इन दिस लाइव फोन इन सेशन सी आई टी एन सी आर टी आई एम रेणु भट्ट विद यू ऑल एंड यू आर वॉचिंग दिस लाइव एन पी एम ए विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन एंड यर लर्नर्स एंड वीवर लेट मी टेल यू द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस सेशन द टॉपिक इज क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग द टॉपिक इज फॉरेस्ट सोसाइटी एंड कॉलोनियलिज में सम पैडागोजिकल चैलेंजेस तो क्या है वो चैलेंजेस और किस फॉरेस्ट सोसाइटी के हम बात करने वाले हैं आपको बताएंगे हमारे एक्सपर्ट जो हमारे साथ इस समय स्टूडियो में मौजूद है लेट्स मीट हिम यू आर मिस्टर वगीश कुमार झा यूर अकेडमिक लीग फ्रॉम स्कूल नेट इंडिया वेरी वॉम वेलकम सर थैंक यू रेनू थैंक यू सो मच नाइस टू कम बैक टू द्लेस अगेन Thank you for giving this opportunity. The pleasure is all ours. And before we begin our session, let me share some certain information to all our viewers and learners so that they can participate in this live phone in session. आप हमें call कर सकते हैं हमारे telephone number पे जो है double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. Either you can drop a mail at our email address that is tth dot class nine at the rate cit dot nic dot in. And we are expecting your participation, dear learners and viewers, because this session is specifically for you only. So, sir, हम शुरू करते हैं session and हम आपसे काफ़ी कुछ जानना चाहेंगे वी आर लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक सो वॉट एग्जैक्टली सर दिस टॉपिक मीन्स एंड वॉट कॉन्टेंट यू हैव फॉर आर लर्नर सर दिस इज एग्जैक्टली द क्वेश्चन दैट आई आस्ट वेन आई वॉज गोइंग टू टीच दिस पर्टिकुलर चैप्टर टू माई स्टूडेंट्स एंड आई थॉट दैट वॉट डू दे अंडरस्टैंड बाय दिस फॉरेस्ट सोसाइटीज एंड कॉलोनियलिज्म and as a teacher i first principle that i adopt is that i don't take things for granted hmm. i don't assume that my students would really know uh, what is written in the textbook hmm. so uh, as it is a live session i uh, believe that i should be talking to my students there should be a dialogue in the class and therefore let's begin the dialogue and renu you are the first person uh, yeah. sitting with me so let me have the prerogative hmm. and honor of treating you as my student and if there are others who they can also ask their questions so the first thing uh, that is there that let's begin with some uh, questions these are what i call the trigger questions this is not moving okay so hum wapas aayenge so, right before we uh, look on to the uh, slide and we try to find out that why it is not moving let me ask you this question straight away that mm. uh, uh, what uh, can you tell me five fruits that fruits. come from the uh, forest and you are from uttarakhand that i know yeah, so you yeah. would be knowing it much better than uh, many of the students here mm. in delhi or anywhere else so tell me five fruits which are wild which are coming from the forest forest only right yes specifically yes okay so let me start with one uh, one of our uh, uh, regional fruit uh, i can say and uh, first one is uh, kafal or uh, if i talk about second one that is uh, hingore mm -hmm. or uh, third one um मुझे थोड़ा समय लग रहा है सर ओके सो व्हेन आई गो इनटू द क्लास एंड व्हेन आई आस्क माय स्टूडेंट्स मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स स्पेशली इन द अर्बन एरियाज आर कंप्लीटली एट लॉस एंड देन आई गिव देम अ क्लू देयर आर फ्रूट्स व्हिच हैव बेरीज एसोसिएटेड विद देम राइट सो यू कॉल देम मेलबरी यू कॉल देम गूसबेरी यू कॉल देम रसबेरी एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज मोस्ट ऑफ दीज बेरीज आर दे ओरिजिनेट in the forest uh, some of them are uh, like strawberries are mm. now being cultivated also but originally they are all forest uh, products that are coming uh, mm. to us now similarly there is another question and these are the quick questions that i'm going to ask you that give me names of five plants that have broad leaves broad now, leaves broad leaves mm. chode patte ho jitne mm. now broad leaves uh, mostly are not found on the uh, plains, plains बहुत कम ऐसे पौधे हैं जिनके लीव्स बहुत ब्रॉड होते हैं आई शुड गो टू सो कैन यू नेम थ्री एनिमल्स फाउंड ओनली इन फॉरेस्ट एंड नेवर डोमेस्टिकेटेड इट्स अ रैपिड फायर क्वेश्चन सो यू हैव टू बी क्विक इन आंसरिंग दिस आई गेस लाइन टाइगर एलिफेंट दीज आर ओनली वाइल्ड एनिमल्स एंड दे कांट बी डोमेस्टिकेटेड आई गेस सो यस 
And uh, this is very interesting question that why they can't be domesticated. Hmm. So, and, and if you understand the interesting question like this, is that dogs can be domesticated, but foxes cannot be domesticated. Right. So what are the kind of things that are associated with that? But that is not our uh, uh, focus of attention today. So we are only looking at forest. And when we say forest, then what do we mean by the wild? Hmm. When we say wild, what do we mean by wild? So the usual question is that wild is which grows on its own, hmm. it is not cultivated, right? It is, uh, in, uh, comes in the forest. Now the question is, what is a forest? Hmm. All right. So forest is a forest. My, my question is responded by students like this, what is a forest? And they are taken aback and they say that, what is a forest? Forest is a forest. So then the question is, are they man-made or they are natural vegetation? And look at the amazement with which things happen is that I ask them to look out from their windows and say that, okay, look at that. There are lots of trees. Will you call it a forest? And uh, they were thinking about it that should we call it a forest or not? Is it man-made or natural vegetation? How? Uh, so generally there was a consensus that oh, it has to be a natural vegetation growing on their own. Now, how does it grow like so thick and so many trees are there in the forest? Okay, so uh, they say that it grows and there is a propagation methodology of nature itself. Birds eat the plants, they eat their seeds and then they distribute and that seed comes out uh, in... It grows in different kinds of places and then different types of plants are found. And suddenly one child comes up and he, uh, he says that, sir, if this is the definition of a natural uh, a forest where the trees are growing naturally, then, and, and the birds and the animals and others are the sources of propagation in a forest, then you cannot find a banana tree in a forest. I was okay. totally taken aback. Why? Why can't you find banana tree? He said that because banana cannot be propagated by the animals or birds because it doesn't have seeds. It has saplings that comes out and only saplings will have to be uh, planted. Hmm. So if that is being planted then it is man-made so there cannot be a banana in a jungle. Hmm. That was a very very interesting question. I had not thought about it and this is, an in, this is an interesting question that I'm going to leave you with. I'm not going to give you the answer to that but there are wild bananas that are found hmm. and you will have to find out if there are seeds of the banana and that hmm. can be propagated otherwise or not. But you see that what is a forest is a very, very interesting question. You take it for granted and then uh, uh, you, you fall in a major uh, problem because you, you thought that your students are understanding and they are looking at... Uh, so. Then comes the interesting questions of social forestry, then the comes the question that the forests are being uh, planted by the government also, will they be called forest uh, or not? So my basic question was not getting too deep into it, but to draw their attention to that forest as an entity. And if forest is an entity, then what are the kinds of, uh, and, and forest is an ecosystem. Finally we came to this, I am just taking a quick kind of a, a summing up of that class where they agreed that okay forest is a complete ecosystem where there are plants, there are creepers and the climbers and insects, then there are microorganisms like and mushrooms. Is mushroom a plant? Mm. What do you think Renu? So, uh, I don't think so, it's a plant. So mushroom is not a plant and mushroom is a fungi. Hmm. And it's neither a plant nor uh, an uh, uh, animal product, it is a fungi, very very interesting once again. Then it has water bodies like uh, live streams, it has daldal, it has marshland, it has birds and animals and they all live in the forest. So forest is not just trees, forest is a whole ecosystem, okay. So do humans, uh, human beings live in forest? Human beings live in forest? Hmm. Ask student curiously. Why should they? I mean, they must be, so somebody else says that they must be poor, they do not have their homes and houses, right. and therefore yeah. uh, they are st living in the jungle. Uh, that was very interesting. So I told them that yes, there are human beings in the forest, and some of them never come out of the forest. Hmm. And this was an amazing thing for them that how can that happen? Can some people live in the forest forever? And uh, then, uh, 
I showed them this, that this is the picture of the person who was the last surviving, he was called the man of the whole, he died. And he died on 23rd of August 2022. And uh, with him died an entire tribe. Right. He was the last man who was living in the Amazon forest, hmm. never came out of the Amazon forest. Hmm. And his death also was found out much later, I mean three, four days later, when some drone or some such kind of a survey was going to take place. This was the man who never saw the world outside. He was hmm. living in the jungle, quite contented, quite happy and uh, very, very amazing. Now I come to the next thing, which is that, uh, so I am not talking of jungle, I am talking of uh, the uh, people who live in India. Nearly 250 million people live in and around the forest in India, of which estimated indigenous Ad Adivasis or tribal population is about 100 million. Is it so? Do you ever realize in a uh, urban setup that there can be these many number of uh, Adivasis and these many numbers of people who are living inside the tribe, inside the forest or around the forest, living off the forest. They are the forest people. And that makes it that if considered by an, uh, if considered a nation by themselves, they would be, they would form the 30th, 13th largest country in the world even though they cannot be depicted as representing any singular monolithic culture. But for that matter, even a country is not a monolithic culture, no? Mm. There are people from different places and then still you make up a country. So they will be the third, 30th, 13th largest country in the world, these many number of people they live. I have given uh, the uh, reference of this. Uh, this was an article that got published in Hindu, but there are several articles and this is what I give it to my students of today that okay, you read this article, you know in detail about these people, who all are these people, what are the problems, what are the challenges and I decided to give them a newspaper article which is simpler for them to understand, the language is simple for them to understand and they also kind of talk in the modern uh, uh, context, so they are not talking in a terse historical context. So now my, my students have got an idea, they are understanding that okay, these many people are there uh, in the forest, but how do they get chips and drink coke was <laughs> the natural question that my students asked. Do they get chips and coke to, uh, and what happens when a soft drink bottle lands in the Kalahari forest? I was expecting this. I was thinking that they would be thinking that the, the people who live in the forest, they should also have the cravings of chips and drink, uh, of coke that uh, my kids have. So uh, this is a beautiful film that I am talking about and I had taken a small clip of that film and uh, uh, this is called Gods Must Be Crazy and I showed a small clip of that. I will not be able to show it right now, but my, my students can see this. This is an amazing, amazing film. What happens when uh, a Coke bottle or uh, the soft drink bottle lands uh, near a bushman who is on the hunting expedition? He has never seen anything like this. And he takes it to his own tribal people and then they put it to different kinds of uses. It becomes instrument, it becomes uh, something to worship, it becomes something uh, to fight with and they are making it, this is an amazing, amazing, hilarious film and many of my kids also saw it and they, they, they came back with a great uh, enthusiasm and understanding about the forest and the culture and the meaning of forest in a slightly deeper way. Okay, so now we go on to, so this, this is the film called Gods Must Be Crazy you will find this on uh, uh, YouTube or any, any such places. Now, after that, what happens is that, uh, okay, so forest is a place. Hmm. Now, let me ask you another question. And this hmm. is a kind of quick, uh, less number, much, uh, very little time that I have. Hmm. So, let me ask you, which colony do you live? Which colony? Huh. So, am you, I supposed you, to you, you, you share you, my address? No, 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 just name, name, name the colony. I'm not asking you the address. I'm just saying that you, you live in Delhi? Yeah, I live in Delhi, Which South colony? Delhi. 
Um, just tell me the name of the colony. You must be living in sir, some kind it's of. It's not uh, named as such. Huh. Hmm. There's no name as such. It's a village. Uh, it's uh, not as a uh, village, proper village, but yeah, it's a place. It's place hmm. which that colonies not have any name. We but, don't but, have any name. But normally, hmm. when you ask them, so there are in uh, uh, cities there are colonies. Hmm. Okay. Now my question is that why, why, what what is uh, why are they called colonies and not a village? Hmm. Okay. What metropolitan city what, as well? What so anywhere? Hmm. Anywhere. It is a small, small cities also have the colonies. What is the important point of the colonies? Hmm. The, those who live in the colonies are not the villagers. Hmm. There are the people who come from outside. They are not the natives, hmm. right? So in Ayanagar, where I live, hmm. is basically the uh, village where the local Gujars live. But I live in a colony, hmm. which is a uh, which is a place which has been built for people like us, where we are outsiders. I am from Bihar and I have gone there and I have uh, uh, got a house there and then I started living it. So there are people who come from outside, they are not the natives. They come to work and earn to send money back home. There mm. are people still at home. Mm. You also must be doing that. Mother and father are there. So we are earning and we are sending the money uh, back to the home. When colonies come up, any new colony that is come up, what are the other things that are required? Mm. So, you will say that the roads are required, the rail is required, the metro is required. Mm. I mean, a colony cannot be in a far uh, uh, off place mm. and nobody will be able to go there. Then, similarly, water will be required and all those kind of things will be required. So, any colony that is coming up will have all these requirements and you will find uh, how. And, and do we need things from the forest for all these right. things? That's the question. So, my uh, uh, another question is that, you understand colony as the pers as a place where somebody else coming from outside and they are staying, they are staying, they are earning and they are sending the money to their native places because mm. their mothers and fathers uh, are there, out there. Uh, some of them may not have that kind of a link with the village, but those people who have the link with the village would do so. Even, even today, there are people who are expatriates, those who live in different countries, in there they will earn and they will send money back to India. Mm. Right? So, so they are the people who are there, living outsiders who mm -hmm. are going there and they are trying to find out that mm, how uh, we earn and we send the money back to our country. From there, forest and colony, we have to understand uh, this, once, once you have understood this, then what do you think must have come from a forest here in this classroom or here in this room? Hmm. What are the kind of things? And you look around and you will uh, see that uh, woods are the most commonly cited items by exactly. the students. Right? Yeah, we can easily L figure out. Aate hai se. Theek hai? But, uh, and, and uh, make a list. Hmm. Okay? So I am asking you that here when we are sitting here, this uh, light stand hmm. is made up of iron. Right. Ha, yeah. Where is it coming from? From forest itself. From forest itself. And from the wild itself, it is coming from there. Hmm. Similarly, what are the uses of wood? If hmm. I ask you, you will say that furniture and that's the only thing that, hmm. that they would talk about. But uh, where we get the iron, alum aluminium and other metals from? from the it, once again, they, they are coming from the forest hmm. and those areas which are not habit, uh, they, where the human beings are not living as hmm. such, you know. So, now, we have set up the whole situation hmm. and uh, one last question, what are the sleepers? sleepers. And I will tell you uh, Renu hmm. that in the classroom I get interesting things. Sleepers are casual chappals aren't they? <laughs> Usually worn indoor. Somebody uh -huh. said hey they are slippers, they are not sleepers. And then there is a sleeper is one that sleeps. And there is a huge laughter <laughs> in the classroom. Ha, bilkul sleep se sleeper bana hai. Hmm. So sleeper is that. Somebody says that no, 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 it is children's pajama usually with legs that cover the feet. Hmm. And that is also a sleeper. Fine. That is also called sleeper. So then I propose that, okay, let's look into the dictionary. Hmm. There is a dictionary. Let's look at the web, uh, Webster. I mean, I, uh, at that time, there was a Merriam-Webster dictionary with us. And it has seven meanings. 
So I said that look into all the meanings. All these meanings are there in that. But the important meaning that is there is that it is a piece of timber, stone or steel or near the ground or support a superstructure to keep roll rail uh, 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 in, in place. So if you look at the ra ro railway track, then you will see that to join the railway track like this, there are uh, uh, long elongated kind of thing which holds these, though, who fastens these two uh, rail track which are going on. Sir, now, I am so sorry, I am interrupting you. Let yes, me, please tell me. Sir, let me tell you that we have only four more minutes left for this session. That's sir. fine. So we have, we have towards the uh, four minutes, we will try to uh, uh, wrap, up this. wrap it up. Yes, sir. So nowadays you have the uh, cement uh, sleepers. This is called sleeper on which the rail track is found. So when the Britishers came, they needed these kind of sleepers and sleepers and those sleepers will come from the forest. My, my duty is that to tell my students. Okay, so now uh, let me go back to my uh, presentation and let me sum it up. I have got three minutes and I have got three slides. Why am I asking these questions? I am asking these questions to contextualize. The knowledge makes better sense when it is contextualized. Otherwise, it is an alien idea, dead fact, irrelevant concept. The students must this time they will go back and they will try to look into the railway track and will try to figure out where the sleeper is. Then I am excited, trying to excite the learner's mind, make them wonder and smile uh, by doing so. And I am also trying to create a desire for learning of congenial uh, learning predisposition. My role is not to cover the syllabus as much as I want to uncover the joy of learning. Syllabus can be covered by the students, things are written in the syllabus. And then it is an opportunity to know that uh, what students find difficult. Hmm. I cannot take it for granted that they understand the meaning of forest. I can tell you and I can assure my fellow teachers that you start this topic, uh, how, uh, what is a forest and nobody will really have a clear idea. This is amazing kind of a conversation that will ha happen. Now coming to the last two ones, that past is a foreign country. This is uh, Hartley had written a great, uh, uh, this, this phrase in his novel, The Go Between. But let's understand that history is not past. Uh, it is reconstruction of past with clues available in the present. And it is a present makes better sense when we understand the past, the processes and factors that may not be available today. That is fine. But then uh, even present is a foreign land if you do not know it just as we tried to look at it, that the forest uh, appears to be something foreign. We have no idea about that. And so education for me, therefore, is a constructive conversation where teaching is not what teachers, uh, uh, what teachers does in the class. It is what students do in the class. Thinking is an active act of doing. Learning by doing is a misnomer. We make and eat rotis, all of us, right? Hmm. But uh, 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 putting it on the girdle, why does it puff up? Hmm. Not many people know. Hmm. But why there are two layers, a thin hai, ek, ek mota hai. Do, 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 do layers kyun hote hai? So we are doing it, but we do not understand. Do, by doing, we do not understand. And that is the last slide that I have to, uh, uh, to share with you that this is where the experiential learning means, where you have to do a reflective observation with what you experience. Experience is important, but experience in itself is not sufficient. Then. From that reflective observation, you do abstract conceptualization and that abstract conceptualization leads you to active experimentation and what you then do we internalize and assimilate the learning. This is what is uh, uh, the Kolb's cycle of learning that they say. So creating that kind of an expectation for the students, creating, not taking things for granted, asking, involving them in the process of learning and in the process of reflective uh, observation, these are some of the key issues that is important for teaching a history. Uh, that's very important to uh, not to take it for granted. History is something that has happened in the past and my students do not get and do not understand it properly unless and until there is a connection that is created with the present and with their own ownership is also there with the students. Mm.
Right. And as we are running very short of time, we cannot carry forward this session. But uh, let me thank our expert, Jha, sir, for your valuable information and for making this session very interesting. Thank you so very much, sir. So that, that is just the setting up of the class, you know. Right. And then you go into the chapter, hmm. then students can read the chapter and they can, they can come back to you. Hmm. That, how that is created, if we get another chance, we will try to talk about that also. Sure, sure. And in near future, we sh I'm quite sure it uh, will be happen. And but uh, at this time, at this very moment, I have to wrap up this session. But you stay tuned to uh, PME with their channel and NCRT official YouTube channel for more informative program. Me, Renu Bhatt, Renu Bhatt is taking your leave. Namaskar. Thank you.